Is this the ninth generation? I expect such a cyborg looking thing. Holy cow. Just gaming. Couple of gamers doing a little bit of gaming on my gaming phone. Got a problem with that? Ooh, it's been a while since we've seen these guys. Red Magic, famous for the gaming phones, the ultimate gaming phones and specs. And it's a bit of a surprise. I've actually got two of them here. Um, one of them has 16 gigs of RAM where the other one is 12. And this one has 512 storage versus 256. Also, the colors look different. Sleet versus Snowfall. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, 6.8 inch AMOLED display, 520 Hertz, gaming shoulder triggers. So we have those touch sensitive shoulder triggers again, 20K RPM turbo fan, 6,500 milliamp hour battery, 80 watt fast charging and a 16 megapixel under display camera. So let's crack these open. I think they're gonna give us a case here. They often give you extras. It is a case and it has a portion of the sides exposed. And this is important because you have those touch sensitive shoulder buttons. So you need to have that exposure on either side. Paperwork, SIM tool. Ooh. So once again, they have this mechanical looking spaceship anime type of look. And this is very slab like it's extremely rectangular. Look at this. So this panel is actually somewhat see through dedicated switch with a texture and the red color, another button above that, that's gonna be your power button, sort of where your thumb aligns, volume rocker above there. Here are those capacitive touch shoulder buttons, which are gonna enhance your gameplay for certain games. We've also got a dedicated headphone jack, which is a huge bonus, especially for a gaming phone. We have cooling for our fan as well, camera layout on the back, but not protruding at all, instead recess. USB-C on the bottom for rapid charging. In this case, they say 80 watt rapid charging so that's kind of good power cable is red and black i think this is typical for red magic i kind of like the rectangular monolithic type of look plus it means that it can stand up on its own now the next unit sleet is the color here oh it's like a matte black finish maybe slightly more executive as far as gaming phones go. So this one has a 50 megapixel indicator here. Otherwise, everything is the same. Maybe it's not completely matte. It's kind of more of a satin and it, it doesn't even have a texture to it. Listen. So two specs, two different colors, and obviously two different price points associated as well. I don't know which one I would choose if I was gonna have a daily driver gaming phone, but obviously when it comes to being eye-catching, this one wins. You've got that see-through aspect. I mean, it just looks more unique, and that's kind of the reason you're getting a gaming phone in the first place. Refresh, a few options here. Auto is selected by default, but let's lock it at 120. 60, 90 can also be locked. We're gonna go with 120. So they've opted for an under display camera on the front, obviously prioritizing the immersion for the gameplay itself. Oof. Did you hear the speaker on that unit? Right, I'm gonna switch it to game mode, watch this. Ooh. That whole unit has a haptic aspect going on as well. Oh, it's a lot of sound coming out and it's stereo configuration. We're gonna throw the fan on right now. Cool. So it's got like that magenta glow on the fan unit. I can see it through the grill here, but Mo can also see it through the back where this portion looks like it's a camera cutout, but in reality, it shows you your cooling fan, which how many phones have a visible RGB cooling fan? This is some of the most immersive audio that I have heard on a smartphone. Holy. So when you're inside this game mode, it's sort of, well, obviously it's everything you need for your gaming. You can add any title into this database here. You have specific settings for your fan. If you want to do screencasting, use a game controller, you can use a keyboard and mouse. So check out the game mode config. I can select a number of different performance settings. You can see the clock speed for the CPU and GPU. I can set up a charge bypass if I don't want all that extra heat charging the battery. Game pads, RGB, everything's in here and I can still see the game. So I can modify my settings while still monitoring my gameplay. All right, so now that I'm on the ground, I'm gonna wanna line up my triggers for this particular game. Now this will be saved. Now you can map this however you think you can get an advantage. 
vintage, so this seems pretty obvious to me. Left shoulder button, you get your aim. Boom, right shoulder button. And I still got my thumbs. Ooh, somebody's shooting at me, good. Where are you, bro? Oh, yeah. Now you're dead. But that's the thing, I mean, that's really what it's about with these phones, is it's like, what if you start from the premise of gaming experience? Yeah, you're gonna have a camera, sure, your phone can do everything a phone does. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 over there. But what if you start from the premise of how do we make a good gaming phone, make everything else work around that, and that's what they do every single year and continue to do here. What are you gonna need for gaming? You're gonna add some triggers, we got it. You're gonna have a dedicated game mode, you're gonna need to cool the thing down, you're gonna have a fast refresh, and and here's one that's hard to get. You're gonna have a massive battery. I'm not talking about 5,000 milliamp hours. I'm talking about 6,500. And then you're gonna need to be able to charge it quickly. Well, we're doing that here as well because we got the 80 watt power brick and the dual cell setup. And then obviously the other consideration is aesthetic. You're probably not gonna want a phone that looks like every single other phone on the market. Instead, you're gonna want something unique. In this case, something configurable where you can actually select your own RGB settings. It's also a big phone. The display is like nicer to hold because of that. Get your hands spread out a little more. Your thumbs occupy less of the real estate. Oh, there we go. <laughs> These bots. Unbelievable, eh? Now there are some other advantages to having something like a game mode, which is that when you're gaming, you can have it set up so you don't get the same notifications you normally would when you're outside that mode. And having this dedicated switch lets you know, like certainly, hey, I am in that gaming mode now and I know what my settings are. I don't need to tweak it every time, like turn on do not disturb or turn off notifications. It's gonna be configured each time you switch this little tab. Plus it's gonna be a decent multimedia phone because watching video is kind of similar to gameplay in a sense that video tends to use a lot of battery life, it fills the display, it can heat the phone up as well. So cooling it down, having a big battery, and having capable speakers, that's gonna enhance your video watching experience as well. So as you guys know, in the past, Dick's honestly with the video is where I begin to appreciate Special. no front camera cutout. Like when I just see that full picture like that and like nothing, you normally have something up here or in the corner or some kind of notch. Now, it's not that they neglected to put it in there. It is in there, but it's hiding underneath the display. So if I flip this around, you can see it's still in there. It's just that they've prioritized other things because there are drawbacks with under display cameras, which are evident. It's looking through a screen. It's the reason it hasn't been adopted across the board. It will work, it'll take the image, and you can do your video conferencing if you need to, but it's not gonna be the prettiest thing compared to some other options that are out there. Plus, they hit me with the beauty mode on that. Let's try that again. They hit me with the heavy beauty. I still feel like I'm getting beautified over there. Uh, we'll flip it around to the back. I think the back is, is actually a decent camera here. We have a couple of different options. There's a 14 mil and a 24 mil. Many pixels. There you go. But again, there's lots of phones that have nice cameras, not so many phones with shoulder buttons and RGB fans and 6,500 milliamp hour batteries. That's the core focus here. That's what you're gonna be looking at this for. And the funny thing is these have been some of the more affordable top tier, top spec Snapdragon devices that are out there. So some people who just want fast processing and maybe less emphasis on camera are also gonna be looking at these Red Magic devices, but you know who it's really about. It's primarily about those gamers that are gonna take advantage of those added features get that tremendous battery life and have a kind of a special look to go with it as well. Let me know down in the comments which of these two you would go for. Which one do you prefer? Do you like the look of this guy? This is the snowfall with that kind of transparent situation going on or are you more stealth? Are you looking at this one here? The sleet. There you can see it does have some cool reflections happening in there but that's extremely stealth black. So which one would you go for and what game would you play on it? Let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Max charge. And they got carried away with the charge animations and sounds. 